Canelli. I'm a professional drummer stroke drum teacher from Sheffield in England. What I'd like to do today is try and give you a little bit of advice about trying to get better sound from your drum kit. Uh, I've been professional for many, many years and obviously as a professional drummer, the drums have to sound good. I also, as a teacher, I notice that I've got a really nice drum kit. It's a Tama Birch Babinga kit. And when I give people a lesson on their first lesson, sometimes the kit doesn't sound good. So I go over and have a look and see but it's a technical issue that's making the drum sound bad. Now obviously the big one is holding the stick too tight. Now if you hold the sticks too tight, if I bang my sticks together, you just get a high pitch. Now if you just relax your hands, you can hear the low, middle and high. That's a lot better. So over the years of playing, uh, to get a better pitch and more rebound, I've gone from holding the stick with the first finger fulcrum to not using the first finger at all and holding the stick with the second finger fulcrum. Now when you can do this, look, have a watch. I'm going to go over to the snare drum and you have a look. So the stick can rebound, you get a lovely sound. Now obviously another thing is bass drum. So with bass drum I'm a heel up player but I've, some of the students push down on the pedal and bury the beater into the drum skin which again makes the bass drum sound really high pitched and nasty. So what I tend to do is I push down on the ball of my foot and drop my heel and the beater comes off and you get a full sound from the drum. Let's go over and do some now. To get a double stroke, I push down three quarters up the pedal, push, slide forward, push, and then slide back. Again, re releasing the beater. So I'll do some double strokes for you now. Right, so let's just play a drum beat which has got some double strokes on the bass drum and I'm going to hit the snare drum right in the middle so we get a nice low tone. Obviously the stick is coming away all the time. Pull the sound out of the drum. Let's do it. I'm going to do the same beat but use a rim shot. My sticks get really chewed up here because I rim shot, so I hit the rim and the middle of the drum at the same time, which gives you a massive crack from the snare drum. And sometimes on a gig, that's what's required. So let's go over and do the same beat with a rim shot. Tuning wise, I normally tune uh, the drum. The bottom head is tighter than the top head. Uh, on the snare drum, sometimes I tune the bottom head three times tighter than the top head, which gives me the sound I like. This is very, very personal. Uh, so when I tune my tom-toms, I like to tune them in intervals like timpani. That I'll go over to the drums now and show you my intervals. <laughs> So cymbals, cymbals, don't tighten up the nut too much at the top, otherwise you're going to strangle the sound of the cymbal. Always allow it to move, right? It's very, very important. So what I'm going to do to finish this lesson is I'm going to go over to the drums and play some beats and fills. Obviously, if you've got a budget and kit, um, what will drastically improve the sound of the kit is buying some professional drum skins. Uh, I normally use Remo pinstripes on the tom-toms, Remo ambassador on the snare drum, and a Remo power stroke three on the bass drum. Change the heads over from the, uh, the skins that come with the kit and you will get a much, much better sound, okay? So hopefully you found this useful. Uh, to find out more about me, go on my website, www.tonycanelli.com. Thank you.